Hey guys, in this video, we are going to learn how you can integrate your contact form 7 with MailChimp. So let's start. We already have contact form 7 installed on our WordPress. You can see we've already created a form here. To connect or integrate contact form 7 with MailChimp, we will use an integration plugin called Bit Integrations. For that, we're going to go to plugins and click on add new plugin. And we're going to search for Bit Integrations. And here is the plugin, Webhooks Automator and Form Integration to Automate 230 plus platforms bit integrations. You can see that the plugin has over 10,000 active installations and it is also compatible with our current version of WordPress. So we're going to click on the Install Now button and wait for the plugin to install. Now let's click on Activate and here's a message over here we are going to skip for now. Once we're here, what we need to do is first we're going to click on Create Integration now it will give you a list of plugins that you can use as a trigger. As you can see, there are some plugins which requires the pro version of bit integrations. We are using the free version and we can only connect to Bitform, Action Hook, Contact Form 7, Custom Trigger, Elementor, WooCommerce, and WP Forms. If you want to connect to other platforms such as AR Forms, AR Members, Academy LMS, and others, then you need the pro version. If you want to get Bit Integrations Pro, you can check our video description for a link. Now, luckily, Contact Form 7 is available in the free version, so we do not need the pro version right now. So from here, we're going to choose Contact Form 7, and here we have to select a form task name. So let's click over here and select Contact Form 1, because that's the only form we have right now. If you want to use it for any other form, you can select it. Then we're going to click on the next button. And now you have to actually select which platform you want to connect to. So you can either search from this list or you can simply type over here what you're looking for. But what we want to do is just select MailChimp from here. It's already here. Now you can actually watch a video tutorial on how you can integrate it or you can read a documentation. But since we're doing this tutorial, we are going to show you how you can do it. So first, we have to choose an integration name. By default, the MailChimp is given over here. You can write whatever name you want for this integration. Then your homepage URL and your authorized redirect URIs will be given over here. Now we need to add our client ID and client secret. For that, we need to visit our MailChimp API console. So let's click over here and it's going to direct us to the MailChimp website. Now we're going to log in using our username and password. From here, you can see we haven't registered any apps yet. So we are going to click on register an app on this button. And now we have to give our app a name. So let's go ahead and name our app. Then we have to provide an app description. So let's go ahead and add one. We're just providing the text for testing. You can add your own app name, app description. All right. So then the company and organization and then the app website. We're going to go back to our website and this is the website URL. We're going to copy this and now we're going to paste it over here and the redirect URI. Let's go back, copy this redirect URI and paste it over here. Then we're going to click on create and wait for MailChimp to create this app. All right, so the app has been created and now we have the client ID and client secret. So we're going to copy both of these and paste it in our bit integration. Okay, now that we have added in our client ID and client secret, we're going to click on the authorize button and it's going to ask us to sign in to our MailChimp so that it can authorize. Okay, it says over here, login to authorize your MailChimp account to test app. So we're going to provide our username and password. All right, then it says connecting test app will allow access to your account. So test app by WP testing and ensure you trust this app with these tips. So you can read all these tips. Finally, when you're done, you can click on allow. Great, it's now authorized. Now we can click on the next button and this is the step two. From the module, we're going to click on this drop down and click on add a member to an audience. And then you can select your audience list from your MailChimp. So once you select your audience list, you can choose any tags if you want. We don't have any tags right now. In the map field section, you will see there are two columns, the form fields and MailChimp fields. From here, you have to select your form field, which you have created in your contact form seven. And from here, you have to select your MailChimp fields and both have to match. Okay. So the first field is for email and we cannot change it. So we are going to choose our email. The next field, we are going to click on this plus button. And here we are going to choose your name. 
and also your name field from MailChimp. The next one is the message, but we actually don't want this information in our MailChimp. So we're going to remove it and we only want these two fields. Okay. If you want to know how you can change or edit your MailChimp fields, what you need to do is go to your MailChimp dashboard from here, expand this audience and then select sign up forms from here. Click on audience settings and then select audience fields and merge tags. So here are our three fields that we wanted. Uh, we don't want the message, but we still made it visible, but you can actually create a field here just by click on add a field. And then you can add any type of field such as text, number, radio buttons, drop down state, birthday, address, zip code, etc. If you want more advanced fields, probably that might be available in MailChimp Pro. Okay. So we're going to click on cancel adding a field. So once you create your field, make sure to save your changes and then go back to your WordPress dashboard and see the results. So in here, if you do not see the changes immediately, what you can do is disconnect your MailChimp and start over the process and this list will be updated. Okay. So now if we talk about the utilities, here are three utilities, the add address field. If we select this one here, you can collect your user's address. Okay. In this case, you have to create um, extra fields for the user address. Okay. You can see that we have address one, city, zip and state fields for MailChimp address as well, but we do not want this. We are going to disable it. Okay. But the option is there. If you are looking to collect your user's address, you can do it from here. There's the double opt in option. If we enable this, it's going to ask the user's permission if they want to subscribe to MailChimp. And the final utility is update MailChimp. So if you select this, what will happen is if users have already subscribed and if they use the same email address to input a different name or different data, then what will happen is it will just update their data for that email address. Okay. So I think it's a good option to keep it enabled. The next one is the conditional logics. If I enable this, you can actually create conditional logics from here. You can select your field and you can apply any of these logics. And the, once the logic matches, you can apply the value. Again, you can add in and or or group and group. So all these logics can be added, but we are not going to uh, enable this. Now let's click on the next button and click on finish and save. So now our integration is successful. Okay. So now let's go to our WordPress website and see if our form is working or not. So here's our website. We're going to go to the contact page from here. We can see our form. So let's add an email address, our name and message. Okay. So we filled up the form. Now let's click on the submit button and here it says, thank you for your message. It has been sent. Now let's get back to our WordPress dashboard to actually check if our form was submitted or not. We have installed Flamingo. So from here, we're going to click on inbound messages and here's our message. So let's click on view. And here you can see the email address, your name and message has been sent. Now we also want the same information in our MailChimp. So let's go ahead and check if we have received it in our MailChimp account. So we're here in our MailChimp dashboard. From here, we're going to expand the audience and click on all contacts. And here you can see that we have received the data. If we click over here, we can view the contact and you can see the details are over here, the email address, your name. So basically that is how you can integrate contact form seven with MailChimp. And here you can get the data as well. Also remember when testing this application, if you use real email addresses for testing, probably it will not accept um, the same email address over and over again. Okay. Once people fill up your form in your site, you will get the real data over here. Okay. Now, although it's possible to successfully integrate contact form seven with MailChimp, if you decide to get the paid version of bit integrations, it gives you a lot more features. So let's take a look at the pricing plans of bit integrations. Bit integrations has two types of license, annual and lifetime. So first let's take a look at the annual plans. The starter plan is available for $39 a year. This gives you license for one site. Everything in the free version is still included. Unlimited active integrations, one year update, one year support and 30 day money back guarantee. So if you do not like the product, you can get a refund. Now, if we switch over to the lifetime plans, 
The starter plan is available at $132, which is a one-time payment. But currently we can see there's a discount of 17% off. Now you can get it for $109.56, which is a one-time payment and save $22.44. Now, the benefit of the lifetime plan is that you do not need to pay annually for your plugin. You basically pay for it once and the plugin is yours forever. You get lifetime updates and lifetime support. Okay, so that brings our tutorial to a conclusion. We hope that this video was helpful for you. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos on WordPress.